So uh, tell us about yourself and what you have going on here. Sure. Uh, my name is Ed Luce, and I'm the creator of Lovable Oaf uh, Comics and a sort of line of merchandise. Okay. Uh, and I don't know. I, usually my tactic with uh, conventions and in talking about my work is to just let people kind of experience it on their own terms right, and right. page through it. Yeah. But uh, I sort of, when I talk about it, I talk about it in terms of it being kind of like the, uh, the queer Scott Pilgrim. Uh, okay. It's got sort of like a love story going on in it. Um, it's got bands, battling bands in it. But okay. there's also like a lot of other kind of stuff going on. There's um, there's cats. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of interest in heavy metal music, so that's a little bit different in terms of the, the music uh, okay. aspect of the comic as well. Yeah. Um, but really, it's just sort of a melting pot for all of my interests. So if there's a, something that I like, I kind of find a character and I kind of find a scenario to put it in yeah. inside the sort of larger Ophiverse. Yeah. Um, but mainly it is, it's sort of like a romantic uh, comedy love story. Okay. Type of comic. So who are your main uh, sources of influence, I guess, growing up, uh, you know, reading comics and things like that? Sure. Oh, gosh. Well, it, the weird thing about me is I... I I grew up consuming Marvel and DC comics, okay. and uh, my art career sort of developed more as a painter and uh, more as an illustrator, because uh, I never felt like I had the skill set to do like superhero uh -huh. stuff, basically. My stuff, my style wasn't really, really sort of that polished or that yeah. dynamic. Um, but uh, when I went to grad school, I, I sort of picked up uh, that sort of wave of indie books in the turn of uh, the millennium around 2000, yeah. like Dan, Daniel Klaus and um, 8 Ball and, and uh, the Hernandez brothers I, I discovered sort of at that point. So I feel like my work is kind of influenced a little bit stylistically by that, mm -hmm. but also my fine arts um, background. I really like uh, Aubrey Beardsley, who is sort of a... a I'm gonna guess 18th century, 19th century illustrator. Okay. Uh, I really like um, even uh, Tezuka a lot. Yeah. Uh, he's sort of coming from a different place than a lot of mainstream comics yeah. people. So I'm much more into sort of like a lot of detail and then big shapes okay. uh, that kind of contain that detail. That's sort of what I, I, I've kind right. of evolved out of. So, yeah. right, right. so uh, you're, what have what kind of crazy comments have people said, noted about your character? Because I. I think the first thing that strikes out is the hair and... Sure. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, uh, especially at this venue. We normally do smaller shows. Okay. Uh, we, we, we love Alternative Press Expo in Stumptown in Portland. Right. Uh, so we were eager to kind of check out Anaheim because we know it's sort of a more suburban landscape. Right, right. And a lot of big guys have been coming up, especially a lot of the security guard guys that <laughs> yeah. work here saying, oh my God, this looks like it's about me. You know, <laughs> I shaved my goatee the other day and, and that's what I look like. And, yeah, yeah. Um, we get a lot of those comments. Uh, yeah. One guy came up to me and bought one of the shirts and said, that's my son. He looked, that's my son. He's like six foot and 285 pounds. And yeah. I think the basic thrust of the comic too is that yeah. um, everybody knows a Wubbubble Oaf. Yeah. Everybody has one in their life, whether right, right. they're sort of male, female. I even I even think of uh, Lady Oafs. I think that that's sort of like yeah. uh, uh, a potential sort of, if we're talking about a type, a character type, I think it can sure. encompass yeah. both genders and all sexualities uh -huh. too. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, do you have any uh, thoughts about bringing this to the, to the big screen one day or just yeah. keeping it on print? Or? It's weird. Um, it, it, when we do Comic-Con uh, a couple of years ago after uh, we got approached by uh, basically a development company okay. asking about the rights for it and yeah, yeah. If, if anybody had bought the movie or TV rights. And right, right. Hollywood moves so slow, sort of. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard much about that, but at this convention another development company came and, and talked to me about it too. Oh, really? um, yeah. I, I would be into it. I mean, I feel like I was really also heavily influenced by Matt Groening and the Simpsons and, okay. and how he created a world in which, as I said before, he could talk about everything that he wanted to talk mm -hmm. about, uh, all of his concerns. So yeah. this is sort of just like a little tailor-made universe for me to talk about my stuff too. Okay. But I mean, yeah, it's got music elements to it, mm -hmm. as I said. I, I've gotten a band to record songs as though they were the band in the comic. Right, um, right. Sort of like Gorillas or even uh, Gem and the Holograms uh, from the 80s. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of got that built into it. I have a, a large enough cast of characters that I, you, I wouldn't have to necessarily focus on just this one. Right. Um, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a whole cast of cats mm. uh, with different personalities and different looks. So, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I, I think it's ready made for that. It would just be a matter of finding people that really got it. Yeah. So what's the craziest thing you've seen this weekend? Gosh, the craziest thing I've seen here... It, there's a tie, uh, and it's an interesting tie. Big Bird. Uh, there's a it, Big got, Bird yeah. costume, yes. Big Bird popping in to, to uh, scenes and people. And actually seeing Danzig, 
uh, Glenn Danzig for the really? first time. Yeah, I'm involved in a comic called uh, Henry and Glenn Forever and Ever, and it, uh-huh. it, it uh, features Henry Rollins and Glenn Danzig as though they're in a domestic partnership together. Okay. Uh, and uh, for years, you know, Henry Rollins has known about it. I think yeah. Danzig is, has known about it for a little shorter yeah. period yeah. of time. But this is the first time that I've been here carrying the book. Oh, that it's um, right here. yeah, it's right here. And these are my my prints from the show that we yeah. had uh, in LA. Um, but it's the first time I've sort of had to defend Henry and Glenn forever yeah. in the context of one of them being around. Yeah. So I've been a little nervous about that. That was crazy. Wait, so for you me. just you decided to just create this on your own and without like consulting them at all? Oh no no no! This book actually was done by a, a, an artist collective in LA called uh, Igloo Tornado. Okay. Um, the the principal <laughs> artist being uh, this uh, uh, artist Tom Neely, comic book artist yeah. Tom Neely. Um, they created this years ago, and okay. it got it suddenly got really popular. Unexpectedly, got really popular, right, right. and they they printed over thirty thousand copies of it. It's oh, wow. sold. So they're they're they did an art show in L.A. at La Luz de Jesus, yeah. which I was a part of, mm-hmm. uh, and then I got asked to be in the the next version of it, which, as I said, is Henry and Glenn forever okay. and ever. Yeah, and that one's more narrative stories about the two of them. So I I people have been telling me all weekend, oh my god, he's here, he's here, yeah. and I at one point I was like sort of watching the walkways yeah, yeah. to kind. To make sure that he wasn't coming around yeah. um but yeah i went over to sort of stalk him just yeah. to check him out because i've never seen danzig live before right, right. so uh this was a weird in the harsh light of yeah. the fluorescence yeah. that was really freaky and weird to see danzig uh, in the back there so yeah thanks a lot for your time thank you